Hi, my name is Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be explaining the entire admission system of Oxford. So if you want to know how it works, what the process is for both undergrads and graduate students, please watch this video. It is going to give you every single answer. I'm going to start by the undergraduate bit and then later on in this video I will do the graduate bit. If this video turns out to be way too long, I'm going to turn it into a separate video for graduate students. If not, I'm going to drop the timestamp right here or I'm going to pop it up in the cards uh, if it is in fact a separate video. But first let's start off with the undergraduate admissions process. So the first thing you do if you are applying to Oxford as an undergraduate student is that you go to UCAS. In order to apply to Oxford you have to apply through UCAS. The so UCAS is a separate website where you can apply to university. You can apply to up to five universities for your undergraduate degree and you can only apply to Oxford or Cambridge so you can apply to both as an undergraduate student. And another little fun fact about UCAS is that you can only submit one personal statement and that personal statement will go to all of your five applications. Obviously if you submit five, if you submit four or three or two it will go to all of your submissions. So you cannot change your personal statement to fit every single university if that makes sense. And in order to apply to Oxford, depending on the course that you are applying for, as you have to apply to a specific course or as they say in the US you have to apply for a major, you cannot apply as an underclad student but you most likely have to sit an exam, an Oxford entrance exam. So be sure to one, check if you actually need to sit an exam, which you most likely will have to do. And two, when you need to take the exam so that you have plenty of time to prep for your exam. Also try to figure out if you need to submit any supplements with your application, such as a writing sample. So try to figure out if you need to submit a writing sample, if it needs to be in English or in a different language, the length of the writing sample that you need to submit. Does it need to be one assignment? Can it be made out of two different assignments? All these types of things, please figure that out. Make sure that you know what exactly you need to submit because it will vary depending on the course you are applying for. And then the thing that makes Oxford different from any other university that you will apply to, the fact that it has colleges. Oxford has 45 colleges and you'll have to apply to one of them. However, you could also submit an open application, but in general students do apply to one college. And you can only apply to a college that offers your course because most of the teaching will be done on site, meaning that you will have a tutor in your college who will sit down with you and have one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two or one-on-three teaching moments so therefore your college needs to have a tutor who specializes in your subject and therefore your college needs to offer your subject. You can find out on a website whether or not specific colleges offer your courses. Normally on a course page or in the prospectus you can find which colleges offer what specific courses and then when the moment is there you are actually able to state one college preference, just one. And stating a college preference as an undergrad means that your application will be sent to that specific college. However, you can also choose to make an open submission and therefore the university will send your application to a college that has fewer people applying for that particular college and that particular course. Submitting a college preference should not impact your chances of getting into Oxford, but because it's such a fragmented process in a way, it might, but Oxford has a system in place that actually prevents people from not getting a spot because they apply to a more popular college. So in essence, applying to a non-popular college is not going to give you a greater chance of actually getting into Oxford. And I'm going to explain that process now. So when you submit your application, whether or not you stay at a preference or it's an open application, your application as a whole will be sent off to a college. The college will then make a first decision which is whether or not to invite you back for an interview and that decision can effectively be one of three outcomes one you're rejected or you'll be invited back for an interview or multiple interviews at the college that you're application received first. All three, the exact same thing as two, in the sense that you will be invited back to the college for an interview or multiple interviews, depending on the course you're applying for, that first received your application, and you are invited to go to an additional college. Whether or not you will have multiple interviews for the subject that you applied for is going to depend on the subject that you applied for. Some subjects require students to have just one interview in a college, and other subjects require students to have multiple interviews for that particular subject. 
from talking to students, I have learned that you shouldn't try to reach too much into the fact whether or not you have been invited to just one college for interviews or two colleges or more, as these things seem to be rather random. And they're also to ensure that all the colleges have the same standards and criteria on what they select as students to be admitted into Oxford. So yes, it can be to have another opinion on yourself as a candidate, but it can also be to ensure that all the colleges are measuring with the same standards to ensure that they all allow students in who are the same quality students essentially. So please don't try to worry too much about the fact of whether or not you're invited back to just one or two colleges or more. And after the interviews, the colleges will make a final decision, which can be one of four things. They can reject you, they can admit you to their college, they can decide not to admit you, but to send your application over to another college that interviewed you, or they can decide not to admit you, but to put your application in a pool of applicants. And honestly, there are several reasons as to why some colleges decide to put an applicant's application into the applicant pool. For example, if all the places at that particular college for the course that you applied for have already been filled and they do think that you would do great at Oxford or some, some colleges want to be within a specific range in terms of male, female, state school, private school, international or home student and they could just think that you're a good enough applicant for Oxford but just not a fit for their college. So it can be a total random reason as to why you're put in a pool. So please don't worry about the fact when you're not getting a place at your first choice college because some colleges just get a ton of applications sent to them and they cannot admit all of these students that want to go to that particular college. But that doesn't mean that these colleges aren't good enough for Oxford. So therefore they're put in a pool of applicants. And all colleges have access to this digital pool. Colleges look at this pool to fill up the spaces that they have open at that college for particular courses. So if another college sort of picks you out of that pool, that is called being pooled. So if you bump into an Oxford student and you ask them to what college they go to and they, I don't know, say a college and you ask them whether or not it was their first college preference and they answer with, no, I was pooled, it means that essentially they just didn't get their first choice college, but they did get into Oxford. And honestly, everybody ends up loving their college, so it doesn't really matter that much. And also in terms of the level of education, it doesn't matter to what college you go to because the education will be very excellent overall in between all colleges. So there's not one college that is particularly better at one particular course than another college. Some colleges do admit more students who are doing medicine, for example. Green Templeton has a bunch of, of medicine students. And as far as I'm aware, Balliol has a bunch of PPE students, but it doesn't mean that they are better at that particular course. What does happen is that the applicant pool is often larger than the amount of places that Oxford in its entirety has available. So there will be students left in the pool after all the colleges have filled up their available spaces. So all the students who do not end up getting a place out of the pool will end up being rejected from the University of Oxford. So that is how it works for undergraduate students. And now let's go into the graduate application process because that's slightly different. So it's different for graduates because teaching is organized centrally. So where the students who are doing a bachelor's degree have tutorials which are organized by their college graduate students are specialized in a specific path so therefore it's nearly impossible for all the colleges to cater towards specific specialisms that the master students are looking into so therefore all the teaching for master students is organized centrally which then also means that the application process has to be different because you cannot apply to a college if that makes sense so as a graduate student you do not apply via UCAS you apply directly to the university and you can apply to both Oxford and Cambridge and you also don't have to stick to one specific personal statement. You can change your personal statement for every single university that you submitted to. And to be fair, all the universities that I submitted personal statements to had different requirements, either in terms of length, and some of them wanted me to include specific points or answer a specific question in my personal statement. So you do have to write a different personal statement for every single uni that you will apply to as a graduate student. And also as a graduate student, please do make sure that you submit all the necessary and mandatory documents such as writing samples, maybe you have to submit a research proposal, please check that and make sure that you submit all the relevant documents and materials that you have to submit because it will vary from degree to degree and from university to university. And when you're working on your Oxford application in the Oxford application portal, you'll notice that you can in fact submit a college preference. Again, you can only submit one college preference and you can also decide to do an open application, which means that you will not include a college preference. Even though the teaching is all 
organized centrally, you'll find that you can still only apply to a college that will offer your course. However, you will see that you can apply to nearly every single college out there, apart from some very specialist colleges. So essentially you can apply to nearly every single college out there because the teaching is organized centrally. So you have lots and lots of choice. And then after you have completed your application and you click that submit button, it will be sent off to the ad graduate admissions office. And they will perform some fast checks on your application. And if they are happy with it, they will send it forward to the department. And the department in this case will in fact make the final decision on whether or not to admit you as a student to the university. And when the department has decided on accepting or rejecting you, you will be informed of that decision almost immediately. So after the department has accepted your application, they will then forward your application to your first choice college. Or in the event that you have an open application, they will forward your application to a college that has gotten less applications for your course in that particular year. Meanwhile, that happens if you have applied before the scholarship deadline in January, your application will also be considered for potential scholarships. And then after your college had a look at your application, if you submitted a preference, if they had a look at your application and they're happy to take you on, you will get a letter sent to you by that college stating whether or not they accepted you as a student. If your preferred college decides not to take you in as a student, then you will also get a letter from them and then your application will be put in a pool of applications. The only difference between the graduate pool and the undergraduate pool is that the students in the graduate pool have already been accepted by the department so therefore they have to find a place at a college and you cannot get rejected from the pool if that makes sense unless something happens but for undergraduate students being in that particular pool of applicants it's not a guarantee to get a spot at a university well for most graduate students unless something happens again but for like 99% of the students in that pool it is a guarantee that you will get a place at the university which also means that you will have to get a place at a college because nearly every again there are exceptions but literally 98% of all students are part of a college so if you end up in that pool all the colleges have access to that pool and they start looking at students to fill up places and to make sure that they have a well-rounded student body at their college and they will take people out of that pool for their college and to be fair that's what happened to me <laughs> I was pooled as a graduate student and I ended up at another college than that I indicated as my first choice preference and when you're in that pool which you will know because you will be informed by your first choice college on whether or not they took you in and to be fair it can take anywhere between three weeks to three months until you get allocated a spot at a college so it can take quite a while so please don't stress if you haven't heard back yet with a college decision I was quite lucky I got mine I think three weeks after which is very very soon but some other students are stuck in that pool for three months but it doesn't mean that you don't have a place because you do already have a place at a university if that makes sense so that's where the undergraduate and the graduate application systems are a bit different so yeah this is the entire application process I hope I cleared it up for you I hope I explained it well because that was the goal of this video to explain it all and the fact that this whole pooling system exists is just to prevent creating a hierarchy within colleges with more elite students and less elite students or like creating a weird sort of admissions hierarchy within colleges but yeah anyways that was my entire story before I dwell on a pooling system any further thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one very very soon Thank you.